Hello students, welcome to the last video for describing C++ program grading a true, true false quiz which uses the arrays and the functions. So uh, by now in first five videos we have discovered, uh, we have covered all the functions, design of the program and uh, we have explained their coding. Now in this last video we will see how all the functions that we have written are woven into a single piece of software inside the main function. Okay. So let's open our main function which is closed right now. Just fold it. So this is our main function and all the one, two, three, four, five, six user defined functions are called from the main. Uh, this one is called I think twice because we need to work with two different files. So we'll see how they are all woven together in this piece of software. So first we just welcome the user you could actually have this done by a function if you like not a problem then i define my if stream object which i'm going to use twice one to bond to the questions file and then to the answers file okay so it's bonded to the input file. You could use two if you like, but there's no need to do that. You can actually work with one. <coughs> and then this is stream object <coughs> and the string questions is passed to the open file function. So basically we are calling it to get the valid file for questions array and you can refer back to the code whose copy has been sent to you or to the video first one that described the open file function to see how it works and why actually it will work all right <clears throat> so then we declare a questions array of length max which is set to 10 because there are 10 questions. You could set it higher than 10, not a problem. That will work as well. And this array is empty. This simply means that a zero length string has been stored in all the array elements. And then we call the fill questions array function and pass the empty questions array and the if stream object in that got bonded to the questions file and the fill questions array takes control and code is in the fill questions array function was described in previous video it basically fills up this questions array and counts how many array elements has been filled and that count is returned by the return me mechanism as length of the questions array, logical length of the questions array. And it could be, as you know, logical length is always less than capacity or equal to capacity. Maximum it can be is equal to the capacity. Okay. And then we close in if stream object so we can reuse it. Okay. Because our file of, of questions array was already opened. We already filled the questions array, so we don't actually not, not we don't necessarily use need it anymore. So if we close it, the bonding with the file that had questions broken, and it's free to be used again. And that's exactly what we do. We reuse it in this open file functions, but this time we read the answers file. At least we bond it to the answers file and we go through the same process. We get a file that exists and has at least some data. Okay. And 
then I create an answer array of the same length max which was the question array which is on the top is shown as 10 and then I call the function fill answer array pass it the empty answer array and if stream object in which this time by virtue of this function has been bonded to the answers file answers.txt in this case okay so this function fills the answers keys into the answers array and return its logical length now of course we have designed it in a way that logical length of the questions array and answers array will be same but that may not be case if one of the questions file or answers file was typed wrongly if they're not the same then we have a problem so we test for that that length logical length of the two arrays the questions array and the answers array or the key answer key array is the same if they're not the same we have a problem because we cannot have unequal questions and answer keys so in that case we could do partial processing but good idea here is to just exit the program exit zero exit the program and all the code after this line is skipped exit zero causes complete exit from the software okay but if this didn't happen if uh, questions array and answers key array at the same logical length uh, that means we have equal number of questions and answer keys so in that case this will not be true and exit will not take place so in that case we continue on then we create a response array also boolean type because user response will be 0 and 1 0 is false 1 is true and we also make it the capacity 10 same as the string questions array or the answers array was and then we call the fill response array function and you have seen code for that in previous video and it takes the questions array and the response array as arguments and the logical length which means that number of questions and number of responses will be same okay the logical length of either one so basically this function presents the question from the questions array waits for user's response once the user's response that to each question recorded in this array so this array comes back filled basically and since responses are filled we can grade the responses grading is done by the grade responses function it takes the answers array answer key array and the response array that got filled by this function here and it matches every element of this array with the corresponding index element in this array if they are the same then user scores one point otherwise they score no points and function as we described earlier in another video computes users score and returns that as the return value and score after the function call is complete the score has the score okay in a minute we'll of course uh, tell user whether they passed or failed but before we do that we print their answers and their uh, the answer keys and the responses so this actually takes all the three arrays as argument this was described in the last video it prints the question answer keys and the response user had for all the questions and 
can't recall whether it says whether they answered question right or wrong, but we'll see that when we run the program here in a minute. And since the score was gotten, I compute a percent. Notice the score and len are both int, so you have to cast score to double type to get a floating point number in the percent. Multiply, multiply that by 100. And this is the arbitrary thing we have done that if percent is 60% or more, then we print their percentage and we say you pass the quiz. Otherwise, of course, we print their percentage still. Actually, this could have been done outside, but it doesn't really matter. And then we say, sorry, you failed the quiz. And then we close the stream object. And we do the return zero from the function. I would like you to do one addition to upgrade to this program. Upgrade this program to print uh, answers and responses. to an output file or in other words create functions that can print to output file so that you have a archived version of the whole running program. In the output file. So that's another activity you can do. Okay, we'll quickly run the program and then we'll end this last video. Uh, this was run before, but we'll just run it again. Hold on a second. Okay, actually we ran the program before and this was the output. Welcome to the general knowledge true false quiz. Ask for the file name. File name was provided, question.txt. And program feeds it back that that was the file name. This file did have data, so it was open successfully. Then it asked file for the answers. Give that name. Program feeds back the file name. And that has data and that's open successfully. And then each question is presented and user enters an answer. User informed that there's one for the true and zero for the false answer they have to enter. And here you see question, user response, question, user response, and so on. And then the feedback is given. Uh, one surprising thing is in Xcode, I'm not getting the table columns aligned, but they do work quite well with Visual Studio. So there should be a perfect column for the questions, uh, another one for the correct answer, and another one for their response. So this may be Xcode problem, but it does work perfectly okay in Visual Studio. And then their points and percentage and whether they passed or failed are printed. Okay, thank you. This ends the last video in C++ program to grade true-false quiz. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye.